idea is no, that. No, it's just a question. It'd be a 12.4% tax, right? That, that's that's how it taxes it is right okay. now. Correct. Ms. McGinnis, we have a cap on income subject to Social Security taxation, right? Correct. If we lifted and said you pay Social Security 12.4% on all income, what would the effective tax rate be for a millionaire in America? If I may, Mr. Chairman, that's not correct. We're not talking about raising. We're not? I'm sorry. No, 6.2% on all income. Okay, so why well, ask her? She said 12.4%. Well, so ask me. That's I'll ask my you. Bill. It's 62 <laughs> So why don't, I, why don't we do this? Why don't you bring your bill to the floor for a vote? Great idea. Mm -hmm. Mr. Lawson, do you agree with that? Oh, uh, absolutely. Okay, Senator so Sanders' bill should definitely be brought to the floor I for a vote. I could agree more. So, Senator Schumer, in case you're watching, I challenge you to bring Senator Sanders' bill to the floor. He's a very sincere man. He's found a way he thinks to save Social Security. And all I ask in return is to vote on Senator Romney's bill. You'll have two approaches to how to solve this problem, and you're not going to do it. You're all talk. Prove me wrong. Ms. McGinnis. The Gang of Six did not take Senator Sanders' approach, did it? For reforming Social Security, no, it didn't. It had a balanced plan that looked at revenue. Did Simpson Bowles take this approach? No, it did not. Did the uh, Greenspan Commission take this approach? No, it did not. Do you agree with that, sir? Yes. Okay. The approach that you're advocating is along the following lines. Raise the cap, right? More revenue. Raise the cap, right? Reduce benefits to the people who can afford to take less. Is that fair? Y'all both yes. nodding, right? Yes, okay. Adjust CPI. You're yes. nodding. Yep. And that allows us to restructure the program to get the baby boomers through without going bankrupt. Does that make sense? Is that what we're talking about in general, Ms. McGinnis? Yes. Is that what we're talking about? Yes, Senator. And I think we can also afford to do that while protecting those who are most vulnerable on the And program. one thing you can do is actually have an enhanced benefit for people 80 and over at the lower ends of the economic spectrum. Is that correct? Yes. yes. Count me in for that. So what I want to do is to do what other people have done in the past to bring us together. Mr. Lawson, this may come as a surprise to you, but you're not going to bring us together. <laughs> So the bottom line is somebody's got to bring us together. I don't think it's be Mr. Lawson. So what I want to do is be brought together in a fashion like people before us. Ronald Reagan and Tip O'Neill adjusted the age from 65 to 67, and it did buy us some time. That alone is not enough. Let's look at maybe doing it once again because we live longer. Mm -hmm. And if we don't need to do it, great. Count me in for raising the cap on income subject to Social Security taxation within reason. I don't want to have like 70% tax rates in America, but also count me in for people in my income level and my financial situation taking a smaller COLA or maybe a restructured benefit because I can afford it. That's what it's going to take to save Social Security. It's not going to be fixed by taxing the wealthy. That can be part of it. So I'm hoping, Senator Sanders, that we will have a vote of your plan and Senator Romney's plan but then get on about the hard work of finding a solution that will get buy-in from both sides of the aisle. I really do believe it's possible if there's political will. To President Biden, things are not going well in America right now. Hopefully they'll get better. But you have an opportunity, President Biden, to do something along the lines of Reagan. And I take a different view about how to save Social Security. Mine's more realistic. Uh, yours is a fantasy, but the problem is real. And you're a good man. You're consistent. Every time there's a problem, tax the rich. Count me in for more revenue. We're going to need more revenue. But if you think taxing the wealthy is going to save Social Security, you're wrong. So where are we with Social Security? By 2034, according to the recent trust fund report, the money in Social Security will require us to reduce benefits so that you can get only 77% of the benefits you owed because we're paying out more than we're taking in. That's a fact. And here's the model I would suggest, the Reagan O'Neill model. And the, I think it's in the 80s, Greenspan Commission was formed by President Reagan. Tip O'Neill and Ronald Reagan were known to have a drink together. And apparently during one of those discussions, they said, well, let's do something about Social Security because it's going broke. So they got Alan Greenspan and a bunch of folks to come up with some ideas. They did a little more on the revenue side, but they adjusted the age of retirement over time from 65 to 67. Now I am 66, uh, soon will be 67. I have a good salary. I have a military retirement. I have a congressional pension plan. 
If you ask me to take a little less to save Social Security for people who need it more than I do, count me in. And it's going to take that kind of commitment from all of us. The wealthier people are going to have to take a little less in benefits. Younger people are living longer, so we're going to have to adjust the age probably once again. But here's the fact. In 1955, when I was born, there were 8.6 workers for every retiree. 1990, there was 3.4. In 2022, there's 2.8. By 2050, there's 2.2. Senator Romney has done everything he can personally to save Social Security. If you ever go to a uh, Romney family reunion, you'll see a lot of people going to pay into Social Security. I have let you down. I'm not married with no kids. There's people like me screwing this thing up. So <laughs> the bottom line here is that we have fewer people working for the number of people retired. And if that doesn't create a problem, then I think you're missing the point. 2.2 people by the middle of the century are not going to generate the amount of money necessary to keep the fund solvent if we don't make some changes. So what are the changes that Simpson Bowles, the Gang of Six, kind of bipartisan people have looked at? Adjusting the age of retirement, increasing revenue, and trying to make the benefit structure more efficient. I don't need a lecture about Social Security. I understand the value of the program because when I was 22, Lost both parents, had a 13-year-old sister to take care of. The money really mattered. It matters to a lot of people in retirement. It's their primary source of income. I'm at a stage now where I could change my, wouldn't change my lifestyle to have a smaller COLA for me, maybe none at all, but smaller for sure, and to restructure the benefit schedule so the money will be there for people who need it more than I do. I don't know how to solve this problem without all of us working together. I know that what Ronald Reagan and Tip O'Neill did in the 1980s worked for a while. We got to do that again. They didn't go to the approach of Senator Sanders of just taxing the wealthy because it's not going to work as a standalone proposition. So the country is in a world of hurt. Our financial house is not in order. By 2031, we'll have $2 trillion in annual deficits. The national debt by 2032 will be $40 trillion. Uh, by 2052, debt to GDP will be 185%. That's a separate problem from Social Security, but Social Security is sort of consumed in that. Now, the trustee report assumed something about the viability of the trust fund, Mr. Chairman. They assumed about a 3.5% inflation rate well, we know now that that's not, ex that's not exactly what's going on. Interest rates are going up. Inflation rates are at 8%. Every increase in interest rates is about $200 billion debt service. We're on a trajectory where inflation is higher than anticipated, which puts stress on the trust fund. Interest rates are going up, which will put stress on the economy. So what I propose we do is have this discussion. You can blame us if you would like but you're not going to be able to blame me for not caring because I do. And I will challenge your assumptions about how to save the system, understanding you're a patriotic American and you want to do what you think is best. But in your world, we're all the bad guys and you figured this out. You haven't figured it out. What you're selling doesn't work. And we'll have a good discussion about what will work. It will be bipartisanship. It won't be the Sanders plan. It won't be individual private accounts that might be part of the mix, who knows? The bottom line is we're going to have to make some hard decisions. I stand ready to make those hard decisions. Mm -hmm. Senator Romney has been terrific. Senator Romney wants somebody outside of politics to give us some information like we had with Simpson Bowles, like we had with the Gang of Six, to adjust Social Security and stop it from running out of money by 2034 and having to reduce benefits. And I think he and others on our side and people on your side, quite frankly, are willing to do this, and I would invite President Biden to be part of it. I would love to be able to sit down with the administration and see if we can recreate the momentum for Simpson Bowles or the Gang of Six, where we put on the table something of everything, where everybody has to give a little bit to save a system worth saving. So it's, if this is an election year issue, great. I think it needs to be talked about, and we're going to talk about it in terms on our side that is uh, a little more holistic than just tax the rich.